Well, good morning, uh, men. It's my, uh, I guess, privilege and uh, uh, but I, not a joy, but it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to uh, talk to you today and uh, bring you some of my thoughts and um, a little bit of my own experience uh, here. Um, I was actually uh, last minute asked by Cam uh, to to switch places. I was scheduled a couple of weeks ago and uh, or a couple of weeks from now and. And he, uh, he, due to the fact that he has a brand new grandchild, um, asked me to uh, take his place today. So I uh, kind of put something together and I'm hoping that you can uh, take something from it. But more so, uh, I think I'm hoping that I can generate some discussion and we can have um, just just a good a good chat um, post the talk. So um, the first, I, I think there's two documents uh, available on the chat, and the uh, first one I wanted to talk about um, was, I think, a document called Friends. Um, I've labeled the document or labeled the title of the document, The Wisdom of Good Friendship. So um, just wanted to walk through that or, or read that document first, and then uh, and we will move from there into uh, the second document, um, one that actually Dr. Dave put together uh, several years ago. I think in February of 2021, and it's called One Anotherhood, and um, they kind of relate really well together. So <clears throat> the first document called uh, Friends or the Wisdom of Good Friendship. And I've taken a text from Proverbs 17, verse 17. Um, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. There is much wisdom in having good friends. In my own life experience, I had few close friends growing up through my teenage and young adult years. I was friendly with many peers, coworkers, cousins, and siblings, but never close to any one of, any one of them. Until more recently, my youngest years, until about the age of 10, was the time in my life when I had some good close friendships. Throughout high school, I was just as much friends with the girls as I was with the guys. And I never had a girlfriend until I started my dating my wife two years after I graduated. I wasn't necessarily a loner or socially awkward, though some may disagree, but neither did I have anyone in my life who I could share deeply with. I think that there are probably many reasons for this, and it may be that not all of them are bad. I don't know, and I've never had a psych evaluation done to help figure any of that out. In my experience, especially going through recovery, I'm... I'm I've learned and I'm continuing to learn how to build into my relationships with others to become a better friend and a better friend and more friendlier or more accepting of friendships. Um, maybe you can relate, maybe not. My hope is that through this talk that we can develop a good discussion around this topic and share um, each of our thoughts on it. I don't know of any stats or have any stats available to, to uh, compare um, men who are going through recovery or who have struggled um, in, in addiction issues um, to men who have not, um, as far as how deep relationship goes, uh, relationships go. Um, but I've noticed through my several years of being part of Regroup that many men who join that when asked about finding an accountability partner have expressed similar thoughts to what I had when I joined um, is I don't have anyone in my life who I can share with at that level. Um, maybe you can relate to that, um, maybe not, but I know in my, um, I've heard it several times before and as we've had discussions in the past about accountability and, and sponsorship and things like that, that um, many of, uh, maybe 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 even you have, have mentioned um, that it's difficult to find somebody that we can really get close to in that level or even a, approach as being an accountability partner. Um, not just being nervous about asking someone if you could be vulnerable to them, but actually knowing, not knowing who to ask. Often we will resort to another man in recovery who has gone on through the program or who may be in our breakout group who we can relate to or um, but they are often not in our immediate circles. They're not considered a friend. Um, they're, they're an acquaintance, and, and often we are, are able to relate well because we have similar backgrounds. Um, you might have several good buddies, um, guys you go to a game with or have a drink with or shoot around a golf with, but not a guy on a level that you can share deeply with. I don't believe that women have the same difficulty with this, at least not the women in my life. They are much more relational and 
willing to share and divulge information that as men, uh, we may not even know what to do with. We all probably realize that when women get together, they often can talk for hours about all kinds of things and still not have said it all. As men, we are different, but I believe we can benefit from similar relationships with other men. I believe that as, a, that as men, if we had deeper friendships with other men in our lives, we would be better for it. I know that as I have worked on building into relationships in my life, that it has benefited me. I know that the last few weeks, there have some good talks around accountability partners and sponsor, and I couldn't agree more early. I know men here who have a pastor as their accountability partner, um, and these are all good and necessary relationships. I just want you to consider your day-to-day -day life and who might be in your world that you both could benefit from a closer friendship. Accountability partners are a must for each of us in recovery, but my point is don't stop there. We all have other men in our lives who can benefit from us or be a benefit to us. Um, as an example, I, I recently, I, it was just as I was preparing this, I was thinking of a cousin, a direct cousin of mine who went through a difficult divorce shortly after his marriage. And um, it just one of his brothers um, called him, video called him every single day for almost six years. Um, and just as a, as a, as a sibling, a, a, it was a really deep friendship, which they developed um, and it helped them through some of the darkest times. And when he was recently remarried, his brother stood at his side and they actually, they wept um, as the groom tried to give his thank you speech. And just, there was, there was a really close relationship there and um, it just really helped them both. So is that something that is in your life or, that you may be missing in your life. Um, and what, so what's holding us back um, from more meaning, meaningful relationship with other men? I've brainstormed some of the things that I think have neg negatively impacted my relationships over the years. Um, hopefully you can help me form this list um, in the discussion afterwards. So yeah, I just threw a few things down here and um, we'll run through them. <clears throat> uh, in, in probably, I think this is the number one is probably the most prevalent in my life, especially when I was in that, an older teenager, young adult, I was pretty self-indulged. Um, and that kind of comes out in some of the other things too, but often concern uh, with who I was and how I was feeling and what I needed from life and, and my attempts to uh, um, just, just concern mostly about me. So number one, I was fairly self-indulged. Um, Another one, number two, I was, you know, and maybe you can relate to this, is too ambitious, um, the entrepreneurial spirit, um, building into business and and trying to um, develop a uh, life around around business more than, um, and, and sometimes leaving others out um, in, in order to, to promote that um, entrepreneurial spirit. So um, very competitive um, at times, you know, trying to uh, the picture of uh, trying to elbow my way through a crowd or, or push my way to the to the front of the line um, doesn't <clears throat> help with creating any friendships either. I'm too far away. And this is probably more in thought than, than in reality, but either relationally or even physically to show um, concerns, others concern or care. Um, Maybe you can relate to this, but often if there's a uh, a friend of mine um, that's that's lost a loved one or something, it's it's really hard to know how to to uh, offer offer them uh, uh, concern or care or, or acknowledge their their hurt, um, and and often I would leave leave it out rather than even try to approach somebody and offer for my uh, my sympathies to them. So. Um, just, that's the kind of idea I was thinking, too far away, um, too focused, needing to get ahead. That's kind of the same as uh, the entrepreneurial spirit. But um, again, the, the, the focus in life, always just trying to be, uh, to, to make that next step and, and uh, climb the, either the corporate ladder or, or work into to my life, uh, uh, a limitless uh area where it can where it can grow in business and and uh, you know looking for financial benefits and things like that so too focused uh, too ashamed too afraid of what others might think of the real me um not willing to actually allow um 
the the true me to be to be shared um, because I was too afraid of it. Um, <clears throat> I'm willing to be vulnerable, not willing to put anything on the line, um, just too risky, uh, too committed to certain schedules and overly busy life didn't allow for time for others. Not willing to commit takes too much time, too much effort to, to commit to a relationship with other men. Um, you know, even to do the fun things sometimes in life, um, it was, uh, you know, whether it was uh, a game or some entertainment or or a sports event, or even even doing some sports for myself, um, was that was too much to commit to. Um, I don't know if the rest of them I could really relate to, but I, I was just brainstorming. So um, too egotistical, um, over concerned with popularity or a need to be at the top. Um, sometimes those can that um, the, the ego can can push others away. Um, you're just you're too much, uh, too popular, I guess, in some places, and um, maybe you can relate to that. Uh, too proud, the idea of look at me, see what I've done. Um, others may not, uh, that doesn't help in, in developing uh, good friendships. Um, sometimes we can be too important for others. Um, we see ourselves as, as um, not being in the same crowd as, as those under us, um, not worthy of of my attention. So maybe we feel ourselves would be too important. Um, not loyal to others. Um, others are only good enough for how they benefit me. Um, again, um, just, just another way we can, we can push um, those friendships and, and relationships um, a little bit further away and uh, gossip about others, slander, share things, set in confidence. Um, again, another good way to, to destroy a close relationship. Um, I just wanted to consider a few relationships we find in scripture and see what we can learn from these stories. Um, David and Jonathan from Samuel 18 uh, to 20, several chapters there, uh, but uh, a relationship in scripture that we can find is, is a very close relationship. And I just pulled out one text there from 1 Samuel 18, verse 3 and 4. And this is if you just the context of the story is um, David had just conquered or killed Goliath. So this is a story right after the battle of David and Goliath. And, um, and Jonathan, <clears throat> the king's son, um, this is, this is three and four of the next chapter. And, and David made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Uh, Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing, gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword bow and his belt. Um, just a relationship was so close that even as the king's son, he was willing to, uh, he, he really laid down his kingship or his, his uh, royalty in front of David as if for his friendship, just put it all aside. And um, we know, we often know the rest of the stories too, of how David was pursued by Saul and, and Jonathan, you know, stood by David's side, even though his own father was trying to kill his best friend. Um, I, I think that's a relationship that uh, was very, very rich, had a lot of David and Jonathan. And um, we see through David's life, um, even late in his years, how that relationship, what it meant to him um, and how he treated others and, and um, Mephibosheth and others um, through the later part of David's life that he, he really valued that friendship and that relationship highly. Um, another another uh, example in scripture is Daniel's three friends, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they stood before uh, King Nebuchadnezzar uh, after the, he had commanded that they bow down to uh, the golden idol. And they said, um, you know, direct quote from Daniel 3, verse 16, um, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Um, where they stood together, um, just just holding um, each other's, you know, uh, to 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 death. Really, at that point, they didn't know if they would uh, would live another day or another minute, or if they would be um, would be put aside for for their faith, for their willingness to stand together. Um, again, we know the end of that story is as they were they were, uh, you know, in in cheeses in a personhood came in their midst and stood with them in the fiery furnace until they were called out. And um, again, just a relationship there that we can see in, in, in more than just one 
one another, but uh, in, a, in a threesome where they, they stood next to each other and really were willing to stand together to death um, for their for their own faith and how they had uh, um, just to defend each other as well. So, but the, the other example I wanted to bring here is, is Peter and John. And um, this is something that kind of popped into my mind as I was hearing a sermon on John 20, um, just this past Sunday. And, um, and I did some Google searching just on, uh, on the Bible app, just on Peter, just typing in Peter and John or Peter and the disciple Jesus loved, because uh, that was another way John described himself. And there's a, there's a lot of references to just those two. Um, but the one example I wanted to bring here was, um, it was shortly after Jesus' death and his burial. Um, Peter had just denied Jesus three times and left um, the inner court weeping. And, um, and, and, and so that was a Friday, I guess. And, and then on a Sunday morning, Mary went to the tomb to look for her or to, to anoint spices on Jesus. And, and as she came to the tomb, realized it was empty and ran to find Peter and John. And she found the two together. Now, just if you consider that Peter had just denied Jesus and, and, and John had witnessed that and Peter had, uh, you know, realized his, his deep um, sin and had gone and left weeping. Um, John was, was by his side and next to him through those that day and the following day. Um, this, uh, they had some really close relationship. And as they, they ran to the tomb, um, John describes it well in his gospel about how he, um, he outran, or Peter outran him and, and the characters are, you know, the di different characters of the two men there are, are described in, you know, Peter's um, boldness and his, his over-enthusiasm, um, I guess, and John's more uh, quiet, um, I don't know, not a good character description there, but just very different characters and how they related to one another and how they, they benefited each other. Um, and then throughout the book of Acts, too, just those two men, were often together in different, uh, you know, through prison, through thick and through thin, they were, they were often um, together. And um, just a really good example of a, of a really healthy relationship and, and going through the tough times and encouraging each other. And, and um, you know, another way I saw it is John, John saw something and he believed that he understood and how he would explain that um, to, to Peter and, and he would encourage Peter with his understanding um and, and seeing it from a different perspective or you know seeing something that peter hadn't seen and uh in, in relation to to scriptures being fulfilled and things like that so just a really really good example of a, of a strong healthy relationship so uh what are the benefits of having another guy's back and why should we be working on building on a special forces team around ourselves to combat the enemy Let's consider these truths as taught by scripture in the form of the next document that I wanted to open, um, the One Anotherhood. Um, this document was uh, put together by Dr. Dave in February of 2021. So uh, that's all I have for that document. Let's just open the, the next one. And I just want to run through this one. It's it's probably a, another whole talk on itself. But uh, relationships goes, um, what is the benefit of, of, of uh, having another one another, like one another, or more than another in our life. Um, just, just a really good, um, like I said, a special forces team around us. Um, and I, and like I said before, it's it's more than just um, my 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 point here isn't just having a good accountability partner. It's it's going beyond that and trying to build a, a group of people into our lives or working on the group of people that are, are already in our lives. And, and building a stronger, more meaningful relationship with those other men. So I'm just going to run through. I think there's 29 different um, scripture references to being um, a one another or a good friend to someone else. So I'm just going to quick run through them and we will uh, open that for discussion phone. Um, number one, so D, uh, Dr. Curry's definition of uh, one another is the back and forth, deliberate, interpersonal interchange that expresses reciprocal interest, focused attention, and unconditional positive regard each regard to each other um, as God intended. Number one, accepting one another. 
um, from Romans 15, verse 7. Uh, discuss with one another. They discuss this with one another. Good place to to uh, do that is in, in the friendships we have in, in life. From Mark 8, verse 16. And then ask one another the questions we have in life. If we have a good people in our lives and good good friendships, we can the questions we come up with, we can we can have that discussion or have those questions bounced off the thoughts or our concerns. We can we can bounce those off those around us. <clears throat> devoted honor slash honor one another. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. From Romans twelve verse ten live in harmony with one another. Um, do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Again, kind of goes against some of the things I uh, pointed out earlier as being, um, and it could be negative impacting our relationships. Uh, agree with one another. Um, be willing to hear others out and and to, uh, to you know, get, be able to value their opinions in life and, um, and whether you agree or disagree, but not to, to argue about it, just to, uh, to consider others' opinions, um, to agree with one another from 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10. Uh, humble yourselves to one another. Um, in your relationships with one another or with another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus from Philippians 2, verse 5 and 11. 5, yeah, 5 to 11. Uh, confess your sins to one another. Again, another very good reason to have uh, positive relationships in our lives is therefore to confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of righteous person is more powerful, is powerful and effective. James 5, verse 16. Number nine, pray for one another. Uh, from James 5, again, James 5, verse 16. Um, meet with one another, not giving up uh, meeting together as some in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching from Hebrews 10, verse 25. Teach, admonish one another. Again, um, in a group, uh, you know, more than one uh, good friends around us, we can, we can hold each other accountable, admonish one another. Instruct one another um, in the in the presence of many confidence. Are we can we can have um, uh, be convinced. I, I I myself am convinced. My brothers and sisters that you yourselves are all are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and comp competent to instruct one another. Romans fifteen verse fourteen. I speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, from Ephesians 5, verse 19. Uh, spur one another. Let us consider how may, we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, from Hebrews 10, verse 24. Uh, serve one another, in Galatians 5, verse 13. Have fellowship with one another, um, 1 John 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Offer hospitality to one another. Um, again, considering others' uh, desires and, and enjoyment um, with our own. Show humility to one another. Um, from 1 Peter 5, verse 5, in the same way you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. To your elders, all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. And then number 19, wash one another's feet. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you, should, you also should wash one another's feet. Bear with one another. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. From Ephesians 4, verse 2. Um, be kind to one another, um, be kind and compassionate toward another, forgiving each other, just as Christ in Christ God forgave you from Ephesians 4, verse 32. Um, <clears throat> forgive one another from Colossians 3, verse 13 and 14. Submit to one another from Ephesians 5, verse 21. Don't slander one another. Don't grumble against one another. Uh, stop judging one another. And greet one another. Um, Again, just trying to uh, build that relationship in, in 
in uh, expressing um, uh, concern or even acknowledging another's presence, being willing to uh, bring others into our life in that way. So greet one another, um, encouraging one another. Um, and there's several texts there from Hebrews 3, verse 13 and, and other verses as well. Um, but just being a really good encouragement. I think there's just one, two, three, four, five, six uh, different, five different top uh, verses that quote that um, exactly as, as encouraging one another. So again, um, obviously a, a scriptural um, command to to be a, that encouragement to other people in our lives. Uh, and then to love one another. There's many different scriptural passages um, quoted here that have that uh, exact phrase to love one another and um, showing love to to other men in our lives is is um, highly valuable to them as well it is, as it is to us. So, so the closing takeaways uh, from this document is that, that grasp that one another is our friendship, um, I think, is another way to put it, is clearly God's plan. Uh, to build those relationships into our lives, uh, as not doing it alone, but being willing to uh, to have others in our life that are willing to do it with us. Admit you need someone and others. Um, we all do. Um, commit to seeking out someone and others who you have now, who is in your life that's not really a, a, a friend, a, a way that you can share with deeply and, and how can you develop that relationship into, uh, into a better place um, and then become a one another in another man's life who can you support, um, not just who, who can support us, but who also can we, we rally around and build up, um, make phone calls this week to, um, to be a one another. And, and that's important to, in this group. I think we, we have that, um, that one of the five commandments is to, to, you know, kind of commit to a weekly or daily call to another guy. Um, but also who who are those people in our life, um, the other men in our lives who who can benefit from a similar type of phone call or a similar type of commitment uh, daily. And uh, see how long it takes you to hit all 29 of these one another's. So yeah, again, I just uh, this conclusion. I I think um, just wanted to bring in some discussion about you know is this a is this an area of concern for 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 us in recovery? Do we need to to work on the friendships? Is friendship and, and close relationship with other men in our lives is that a challenge for for you um, as it has been for me in the past and. Um, yeah, maybe maybe you might have some more ideas on how to build um, relationships into into each of our lives. Uh, thank you, and uh, look forward to the discussion.